Guys, this is me, day 437, living in the car with my dog. And so I'm homeless with my service dog, and this is how I turned my SUV into my home. The first thing is I keep a very nondescript fan. I don't have a lot of stickers on it that show that I travel. The situation was I was 19 when I um, was homeless, and I basically, you know, was struggling with two kids. 302 of being a homeless nomad who lives in her car. This is how I use the bathroom. It's self-explanatory. I'm not going to ask, but how do you do number two? My number twos are pretty much planned. Hey guys, welcome back to More Than Life. Now before I get into this video, I ask that you like, comment, and subscribe. Also, smash that notification bell just to be sure you get on my videos as soon as I Let's get it. guys this is me day 437 living in the car with my dog at this point i'm thinking nothing's ever gonna get better how am i gonna get out of this situation millie was the only thing that kept me going for a long time but it wasn't until i started making videos like this and connecting with you guys that i was finally able to not only get an apartment for me and millie but i was able to get a p.o box so you guys can send us anything that you want including mail or art or even if you want to tell me your story i would love to share everything you you send us on here one day until i'm homeless with my service dog and this is how i turned my suv into my home for under 300 all right starting out with my bed build um my neighbor helped me build this i know nothing about building i just stood there and talked his head off and handed him tools <laughs> we got everything from lowe's the plywood the two by fours we wanted to make sure my bed was able to be removed just in case i ever needed to get to my spare tire then we used treadmill rubber to put on the top of it that he just had in his garage then i got a four inch foam mattress for around a hundred dollars and put my bedding on it so there's my comforter and sheets and I threw this pillow in there for aesthetics, but it doesn't match at all. <laughs> but it's fine, because who really cares? And then there's me in the car. It's <laughs> extremely comfortable. It is a little difficult for me to get in and out because I'm five nine and a half and an Amazon woman. And then my service dog's bed area is in the front. It's a little bit comfortable, but still, I couldn't do it. I couldn't. Really. I mean, think about it move somewhere where it's cheap. I keep saying I've said that in so many videos, guys. I know you guys are probably getting tired of it. I'm like a broken record. But you can always move somewhere where it's more affordable. I live in a van about nine months a year, and I live and work in an urban area. This is how I avoid the dreaded knock. The first thing is I keep a very nondescript fan. I don't have a lot of stickers on it that show that I travel. I don't have solar panels and gear up on top. It just looks like a soccer mom van. The next thing I do is I cook and I hang out in a completely different spot than where I plan to sleep. If I'm going to be cooking outside, I'll go to a picnic table or someplace where it's not unusual to see people cooking outside. If I'm going to open up the back of my van and cook out of the back of my van, I back in someplace so that people aren't walking around my van, looking at me cooking, looking inside the van. I make sure that it, it's not obvious what I'm doing. Then when I start making a decision about where I'm going to park for my sleeping time, I will not park in a place that says there's a curfew, no overnight parking, anything like that. I don't like the risk. I choose public lots and places where I know nobody's going to bother me. Finally, once I'm where I'm going to be for the night, I make sure it's not obvious that I'm settling in. I don't run my engine a lot. I don't have a lot of lights on. You can't see lights from the outside. I use headband headphones if I'm laying in bed listening to anything. I make sure the dog knows not to bark. I just try to be low visibility. She got her all planned out. She does. But it's a miserable feeling.
I'm talking about living SUV and everything I need to make this possible for me. This is my mini refrigerator that I technically have not tested out, but we'll test that out soon and I'll update y'all. I keep a first aid kit for any accidents when I decide to go camping, hiking, whatever. This is my hot plate so I can cook while I'm on the road. We're doing Taco Tuesday next week on live, so make sure you hit that follow button. This is where I keep all my clothes. This is where I like mainly need the clothes I wear like almost every day at the bottom. It's like purses and shoes that I don't need all the time. So I set up my speakers so they can, so I can pull them down whenever I need them. But like say I'm set up at a campsite and I want to play some music and I don't want to use my car. These speakers work wonders. We're going to come back to this cute little light. We have them at the front of the car as well. This is my hanging bar. Like, listen, when you're on the road and you know what I mean, I'm a content creator, so I'll be needing a drink sometimes. But yeah, this is my cute little hanging bar. These are my blackout curtains. You see how they could just bow privacy. But I do have a mesh thing on my window as well. And my windows are also blacked out. We're just going to talk about the bed since we're already back here. This is a foam topper and a, like a thin blow up mattress that I'm laying on. And it's super, super comfortable. This is my little basket that I keep on my bed because, again, I'm a content creator. So it has like my mics, my cameras, tripod stands, lights, all that. So I call myself trying to create wall art. And I created this little picture that says subscriber lives matter. I know, so cute. I also made this out of uh, sticky paper. I cut the window out and then I Velcroed it. So it's like easy to take on and off. This is my security system slash where I watch Netflix. My camera is actually set up to where I can say, hey Alexa, show me the front camera and it'll pop up the front camera. I have my generator off just to say battery because I don't need my cameras right now. So that's why I can't show y'all the cameras. But since we're talking about the cameras, I have the blink cameras. This is the module, but I have five blink cameras, four surrounding the entire car, and then one inside the car. So don't play with me. This is my mini heater that works wonders. Literally have it on for 15, 20 minutes. It's going to heat up this whole little SUV. This is my little AC unit. I really don't care for it. I don't think it, it gets as cold as I thought it would, but it's, it's working for now. I keep like um, stuff that I need to like build stuff in the car in here. So like batteries, tapes all types of stuff little knickknacks my velcro straps all that and then i also velcro strap the drawers so when i'm driving they don't fly open this is my dog setup that's his food back there so i can refill it but he got his water and his food bowls right next to him and this is where he sleeps this is like a little storage thing underneath my dog it's like toilet paper paper towels wipes clorox wipes all types of stuff underneath here that i don't really need all the time it stays right under my dog this is my cute little light switch i can turn the lights on and off and then it's also Velcro, so I can take it on and off. So you got two in the back and then you got one in the front. This is the champion generator that's keeping everything running in here. It's currently charging um, outside of my sister's house. I have it connected to an extension cord so I can get a full charge out of it. So I'll be ready to go tonight. This is another speaker so I can have surround sound throughout the car. And again, not use the speaker in my car. This is bathroom stuff, hair stuff, all that electronics at the bottom, all that good stuff. Another privacy screen in the front, aesthetically, aesthetic purposes only to be honest, cause there's one right there. There's also a privacy screen on both windows, left and right. I got this sound machine, but I really don't need it, but I thought it was cute, but I can't turn it on cause I have my generator off, but it give you rain sounds, thunder sounds, all that good stuff. And this is how I use the bathroom. It's self-explanatory, it's a funnel. It hooks right onto her. Keep my wipes, sanitizers, napkins, all that near me. So when I have to use the bathroom in the middle of the night, I'm good to go. I know y'all are gonna ask, but how do you do number two? My number twos are pretty much planned. So I know exactly when I'm about to do number two. <laughs> I shower at the gym, it'll make me get up and go exercise. Also, I am fully doing this by choice. Um, just to travel and just experience living on the road hit the follow button also you can go to my bio and subscribe comments likes shares subscriptions all that is helping me make all of this possible so i appreciate y'all so much thank you thank you thank you crazy now why would you do that i'm sorry i couldn't do it i couldn't live in my car just for content it's all a lie because most of these women all right, living in a place for rent because what? It's way too high. It's too expensive. And of course, you probably want to go full in on your content. So you decided not to work and pursue that dream, right? That's like kind of like quitting everything you're doing and becoming an actor. You're quitting everything you're doing 
and pursuing your dream of content creation? I mean, I guess your content won't be boring, but seriously, this is what a lot of people are doing. They can't, not doing exactly how she's doing it, but they're doing this because they can't afford the bills, can't afford the rent. It's too high. We see a lot of women struggling out here. I've shown so many videos of it. I've gotten so many videos from it and show it. And it's, it's wild. Like seeing all of you going through this, it's sad. It's not sad as in guys feel sad for you. It's sad as in like, what are you doing? Really? Because they're doing that. They're going through that. And also, they're losing their jobs left and right. Sad but true. I busted my and I was just laid off. These companies do not care about us. They want us to give us a two-week notice, but yet can just fire us and ruin our lives on the spot any day that they choose. I have a two-year-old son, no savings, which is my fault, and it doesn't So now I have to go back on the job hunt, and I have to get a work-from-home job because I have a two-year-old that I have to take care of, can't afford daycare. Rent is $2,500 where I live. Now I gotta find out how to pay off my lease early. Because there's no way that we could afford to live here. I don't even have a computer. They just locked me out of my computer. You know, I really thought that the culture at my job was was great. The best that it's ever been. And for them to just lay me off, not even based off of performance. Because my manager just shouted me out today. Saying I'm doing a great job. And then fired me. Day 302 of being a homeless nomad who lives in her car. This is how I get ready to sleep overnight in a parking lot. First, I start by putting all my window covers up. We are starting with this umbrella windshield cover that goes in the front. So next, I'm going to set up the car from day mode to night mode, which just means I move everything to one side of the car so that I can sleep on my bed. You can't really see what I'm doing. I'm sorry it's so dark, but I'm showing you guys that I'm putting up my back windshield cover to cover the back window. Sorry, it's dark, but right now I'm putting the magnetic window covers up to block out my windows. Take my nighttime medicine, chug lug lug some water. Maybe it'll clear up my face. Here I'm trying to decide if I just want to wear my pajamas or put my thermals on under my pajamas. It's been cold lately, but tonight it's kind of warm. <laughs> I don't know where my pajama top was, so I just wore my little tank top and my pajama pants. Now I'm going to crack the windows because it is warm. Here's the hardest part crawling from the front seat to the back. I am five, nine and a half. Your girl is an Amazon woman sleeping in her Prius. And the funniest thing is I actually have to go back to the front because I need to roll the windows down more because y'all, it is so hot. I've been sleeping in like 20 degree weather and tonight it is like 60 degrees. And then here I am crawling back to the back of the car to try and get back in the bed. And I actually ended up putting shorts on. I threw my sleeping bag in the front kicked all my covers to one side so now i'm just laying here with no covers about to go to bed because it's the only way i'm not hot of course i cuddle with simba and go night night hey you guys i want to come here and give you guys a couple tips on how to survive being homeless tip number one don't tell anyone no don't tell nobody your situation because people will mistreat you when you when they know that you need them that's tip number one. Tip number two is do not get on social media telling people your story, your sad situation, because really nobody cares. People just want to start spreading your business like a wildfire. Tip number three, if you do go and stay with anybody, don't stay no longer than three days because you overstay your welcome if you stay more than three days. So get a calcul get a little calculation of how many people that you know that you can, you know, crash at their house for three days, but do not stay more than three days. Definitely if you got kids. Tip number four is to make sure that you get yourself financially together in regards to being stable. So try to look for a job. And also, this is where your faith kick in. Start looking for apartments and start looking for housing. Um, my situation was I was 19 when I um, was homeless and I basically, you know, was struggling with two kids and whatnot and i didn't have any addictions or anything like that because i was you know basically still a teenager but anyways so long story short you basically want to connect with a landlord that's willing to give you an opportunity because the landlord I, I connected to he gave me an opportunity i did not have no job or anything like that he took a leap of faith as well as i did and that was nobody but god so number five is do not be out here drinking and smoking and you know your situation is messed up like that. Do not, do not, do not because drinking and smoking do not solve anything. No, get your bread together. Do what you, get your head together to get your bread together. That's it. That's all. That's all I'm going to say. 
And another thing too is seek counseling from a church or you know a, a pastor or somebody. Get somebody who's spiritual that can join you in prayer and pray you out of the situation because in my situation i literally was suicidal sitting in my car ready for god to take my life i'm like come on let's go god i'm not fit to be no mother i'm sitting here struggling i'm sitting here sleeping in my car and it's cold outside like what's going on so that and then also tip number seven i will basically say to go over everything i already just said keep your hygiene in order making sure your hair and stuff is up to part making sure your kids ain't out here looking dirty because cps is also real if people already know that you can't take care of the kids and you drop your kids off at school late or not taking them to school at all cps will get involved so i thank god that my children was under the age of you know school age but no definitely you can survive being homeless i survived you can survive too get ready to go to bed with me car edition <laughs> So I gotta do this kind of quick because it's raining and lightning really bad outside um, and also I'm tired. Alright, so I switched over to the driver's side so I can put this up on that window. Okay, so I switched back to the passenger side because that's where I sleep. And now we're just putting on a PJ shirt. I'm just gonna brush my hair. Now that I've brushed my hair, I'm just gonna throw it into some loose braids. I say braids, like I'm not only gonna do one. Okay, so it's sapphire. <laughs> so I got this really dumb idea to do two loose braids. I don't know how much of that I recorded, but I am tying my braids together in the front because I only have the one hair tie. I don't know where my other hair ties are. Um, so I'll report back in the morning. <laughs> I just watered myself and the critters. No, I just put the seat all the way back. And I don't know what man needs to answer this question, but how come when y'all see a woman and you see that she's not in the mood to speak to anybody, that's the best time y'all think to pursue her? If I don't look like I want to be spoken to, why are you telling me to put a smile on my face? Want me to be walking around like this? Yeah, <laughs> that's what guys want. Guys want to see you walking around like that because even if it's a bad day, you got to smile. Why would you not? I'm sure from doing that skit, you feel happy after, right? That's why people say that. But I get it. You don't want nobody to say that to you. And that's why guys stop talking to women. Dude, I really don't know what it is. But whenever I make eye contact with men, I look at them and I'm like, ew. Like, I get disgusted. Like, why are you so ugly? Why are you looking at me? The audacity. Why are you looking at me and then why are you so ugly? Or the other way around. Ladies, before you ask the question of why don't men approach women anymore, why don't men take the um, initiative to approach, to go up and talk to women, ask them on dates, it's because you have videos like this. And this ain't the only video that's out here in the internet like this. Like... You got plenty of other videos of women saying the same thing. Don't even look my way. Oh, ew, why are you even bothering to look my way? Why are you approaching me if you are ugly, if you are unattractive? <laughs> Men see this kind of stuff, ladies. Okay, they see videos like this, so they're going to assume, okay, yeah, a lot of women are like this, especially now nowadays in 2024. With the rise of social media, shaming tactics. You know, look, listen, I have whole safety call videos for women, so I understand uh, women's safety. I really do. I get it. And men are creeps. But at the same time, the truth is the truth. And the truth is that a lot of women make it bad for y'all. <laughs> you know what I mean? To not want to be approached, you know, or for men to not want to approach y'all by saying things like this. Okay. And when you say things like this, it's a red flag to me because it makes it seem like, okay, she must speak for a lot of women. And, you know, listen, every dude ain't going to be like me. I'm a confident dude. I'm going to shoot my shot regardless of what women are saying. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I understand the fact that men don't really see a point in approaching when you have videos like this out. You know what I mean? Women like this are going to be single for a long time. I'm just keeping it a buck. So, ladies, this is what you got to understand. Well, see, the thing, a guy like him, he's not looking for videos like that. But there are a plethora, a ton 
of videos like that from women telling men, oh, you're so ugly, don't approach me. Guys know that's how most women feel. Think about it. Let, let's, let's reflect on that a bit. Say a woman doesn't think you, my brother, or they cast me out. Taking a look at, you, look at you that way. So women don't think most men walking the streets are the cats me out. You get it? This is why guys are done. Well, not to him, but to the woman. <laughs> All right, so I recently made a TikTok about not getting approached by men any longer. And several, several people, actually a couple thousand people left comments, a lot of men, and I really appreciate y'all comments. And a lot of the comments coming from the men were saying that they stopped approaching women because us as women said that we don't want to be approached anymore. And I want to know which women y'all heard this from. I, I want to know. I think I've seen in the past maybe women saying they don't want to be approached at the gym. But other than that, I feel like most women would prefer to be approached in person as opposed to like online on an app or something. I don't know. That's what I think. That's how I feel. I also gathered that a lot of men feel nervous approaching women, just like how I said I would feel, right? Like being afraid of rejection. Totally get it. But I will say it's definitely disappointing to see that a lot of men intentionally just don't go up to women anymore. But I get it, right? We told y'all that. I guess some women said that and y'all generalized us. Mm, the feeling is mortal. I also feel like I gather from the comments that women should feel empowered to go up to men, right? If you see a dude that you think is cute, you're attracted to him, why not go up to him? I might try it now. I, I actually might. Especially seeing now that y'all men purposely don't be coming up to us. Oh yeah, and one more thing, I do have a ring on, a playboy ring actually, but it's on my right hand, not my left hand. My left hand is still open. Okay, I have a question. And maybe this is a stupid question, but that hasn't stopped me in the past from asking my questions. My question here, you know, my brother was telling me about how in the gym, guys don't really approach girls, which good, don't approach me, don't talk to me, thank you. But so then I was like, if we're supposed to approach guys, how do you know when a guy wants to be approached by a girl? That's not my problem. You know? Like, because girls, we'll give, like, the little ojitos, we'll give little signs. But, you know, it'll be like, like, we'll keep looking back. They're like, ah. But how do you know? Like, if you're a guy and you saw a pretty girl and you wanted her to talk to you because you don't want to talk to her. What, what do you do? Please let me know. That's what I'm curious about. Thank you. Guys, I'm the biggest advocate of girls. Shoot your shot. Cause you never know. Cause you never know, guys. I shot my shot, ne? And I did not miss. What? And I did not miss. So, girlies, shoot your shot. Cause you never know. Maybe you could find your husband. Maybe you can find your your, your soulmate. Cause guys out here, guys, to be quite honest, guys, but Mashiman, and they can't get a hint. You're not gonna be like, oh no, I'm just throwing him hints. And if he catch them, he does. But if he doesn't, then that means he's not for me. No, girls. Mashimani, badom. Badom, they can't see. They can't see signs. I have a lot of male friends. Yeah, I have a lot of male friends. And a lot of them wouldn't like girls around, like, like them. And then, like, shooting shots. I'm like, can't they see that this girl wants them? Marami, I see you. Marami, I see you. Can't they see that Why you make a bono for gele or now? You know what? Is falling because the scale. Hanya ke who shoot a shot? Do not guys in you shoot your shot. Get twenty twenty four. Hey, things are changing. Things are changing. Shoot your shot. You will find your soulmate. I promise you. And if you lose, ah, you move on. You shoot your shot to the next person. One day it will land. It will land. I'm telling you. I promise you. And this is what the game is going to have to turn to. As you've seen in this video, you've seen women that can't afford their rent because it's too high. You also saw a woman lost her job, woman getting fired. I've been showing a lot of that recently. Also, you see here, woman talking about shooting a shot. This is what it's come down to. See, I'll tell you what's wrong and what's happened with men. See, guys have known for a long time why women want a guy that's six feet tall. Of course, that's hypergamy, but also... A hundred thousand and an enormous amount of money. What's that about? We can see it. 
a lot of women aren't responsible. That's what's been shown in this video. A lot of women aren't responsible. So they need a captain to save them. They need somebody that's going to help pay for their student loans. They need somebody that's going to help keep a roof over their head. Because really, a lot of women aren't that responsible. I'm not going to say the mass, but still, all the women shouting that, oh, I need a man making a certain amount. I need this. I want a guy to approach me. Women are spoiled, spoiled, stubborn, and yeah, they used to get in their way. They just are. And that's not the case anymore. Why? Guys have stopped talking. Guys have stopped pursuing. Women are going to have to start doing like this woman does. She's talking about shooting her shot with force. That's what's going to have to happen. Why? Because guys aren't going for women. Guys, no women are broke. Guys, no most of you women that sit in a guy making 100000 is broke. And guys aren't going for that anymore. Because most of us realize there's definitely more to life than getting a woman that's like that.